So what we've got today is a mounting problem. And a lot of you are going, well, how the hell did you get on it? If it's that much of a mounting problem. This mare is 10 years old. Correct me if I go wrong. 10 years old, predominantly thoroughbred. And she's got ants in her pants. So she's a busy, busy person. So the biggest, it's more of a nuisance than it's dangerous, but you don't want it to progress to dangerous. So do you always, so it's worse than the competition. So being away from home is worse than at home. Who's had an accident getting on a horse? It happens. Because you're sort of between land and air as you're getting on. So we want to make sure the horse is as safe as possible and it's as convenient as possible and as stress-free as possible. So for me, the biggest thing I want is independence. I don't need somebody to hold, hold my horse's head and I can get on them anywhere, at a competition, at home, any of those things. What's the number one thing she does when she goes to the block and she wants to mess around? She walks away. Does she turn her quarters away from you? Turns her quarters away, walks backwards. She tends to go around you. Has anybody got a horse that goes around them? Yeah. So what we're after is control of the horse. But not just control, control in a calm fashion. Now, if you're going to get on a horse and as you put your foot in the stirrup, the quarters go away from you. I know I'm telling her to do that. But if the quarters go away, you're kind of stepping into nothing. So I want to show her that we can have control of this leg. Just this leg. Not all of her, one leg. And if I can get control of that leg, she's going to have to side pass towards the block. So I'll talk as we go along. So I'm going to go on the back wall so everybody can have a good look. So I always find myself up against the school wall or a hedge or a fence, post and rail. Tend not to do it with electric fences because that zaps you. <clears throat> so, from this position, I would like to get her from here to here, but her to come towards me. When you're asking a horse to change, you will always get, why? Like a child, why should I have to do that? Then when you keep asking to go double why, then no, then up yours. Then after the up yours, generally is the appropriate behavior. So what I'm going to start off doing is using this stick just to annoy her a little bit. And what I want to do is touch her sides. And so she's going to start to see how she threw her head up there. So she thinks that's what she should do, or that's what I'm asking her to do. So I ignore the fact that she threw her head up. Now she wants to headbutt me. Oh, good girl. Now she moved the left hind onto the inside track. And I would like to keep her in that vein. So this is using something to annoy. See, annoying is pressure. We always think about pressure has to be something of force, of weight, of strength, and it isn't. Pressure is an annoyance. So I touch her. Oh, hey, presto, she comes towards it. So I let her think about this. And I don't praise her right now, because to praise her, she's had a good little sigh there, to praise her, would interrupt her ability to analyze that she got it right. So I'll ask her again. So she headbutts me first. Then she comes towards the stick. Good. Good. So you'd think she should go away from the stick. It's sprinkled with pixie dust and it's magnetic. So that's why she's coming. We're nearly there. This is incredibly quick, ladies and gentlemen. So I'm going to start that one again. I'm going to walk her along the school, turn, set her up, because what I'm showing her is when she tries to push at me, I'm not getting out the way. She's not stupid, so she's not going to go to the fence. So this irritation causes her to think. So I don't want her to walk into me, so I stop that. So 
So I'll get her to move a little bit. So she's decided to go back to the fence. So I keep touching. I keep touching. She keeps headbutting me. Then when she starts to go laterally, I stop tapping. So she's got stuck again. So I touch her. She headbutts me again. And off she goes. Let her think about it. Good. When you take the pressure off at the appropriate time and the horse starts to understand that their actions start to take the pressure off themselves, you can then go from obvious to not so obvious. So I'd like to see if she could start to come towards me without me having to touch her. Little lost, little touch, off she comes. So we're now getting lateral control of the left hind leg. See, it works that she's a chestnut mare. It works that she's sensitive, because what she would like for me to not do is not tap her. I'd like that too. Good girl. Now she's getting it, I can tell her how marvelous she is. Not so marvelous for not headbutting me again. What I'm after doing now is getting her to come to the block. I stand on it. See, what normally happens when this faffing around starts is we get frustrated and we start going, and stand, and stand. Will you bloody well stand still? I'm, I'm telling you, stand still. And the horse is still faffing around. So when she comes to stand next to me and I leave her alone, she starts to think, I got this right. So I want to know if there's any stimulus that will make her move away from this block. Sorry, Equibox. See, what we're, we're worried about is what if something annoys the horse or surprises the horse into reacting and moving away from the mountain block. But without humanizing her, in her mind she's going, I've worked damn hard enough to get here, I'm not moving unless I have to. Thank you very much. So all the time she was trying to push at me or headbutt me or do any of those things, those are her options. So now, Nearly. It wasn't that funny. <laughs> it obviously was. She got very close and nearly pushed me over the back here. I'm going to take back the reins. And just use what we've got. When our horse is tacked up, reins and bridle, that's all we've got right now. So, here's the mounting. Come on, sweetheart. Come on. One more step. So she goes away, annoy, annoy, annoy. Good girl. Then I'll leave her alone. So if, you, if your horse has the triggers that you pick up the reins and throw the reins across the neck, that creates a trigger. You mess with the saddle, that creates another trigger. You put your foot up into the stirrup and start to do all of these things, and they create triggers. See, she's moving. Ooh. So this is handy. Whoop. There we go. So back to the triggers. If something triggers off her to move, like doing that, see it triggered her. See, this is old habit, muscle memory. And most of the time, horses aren't aware that that's what they're doing. So now she's got a, a marker to work on that me doing that is now not a signal to move. Me putting my foot in the stirrup, see she's gone to move. So I correct that. 
and we do a little peer. Ooh. Ooh. And nearly again. And we're back in the room. And off we go. Uh, 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 uh. She's a god, you're heavier than my mother. No, I don't want to stand still. Okay. So if you've got on them and they start this nonsense, no trick, it's just quietly move them around on the spot. So what you're saying is if you want to move around, feel free. How does that feel? Again, she goes, probably standing still is easier than moving around. You take over the evasion and you, it becomes yours, not theirs. So we've had 45 minutes today. If I, in real time, I'd do this for half an hour tomorrow. The day after that, I'd do 15 minutes. The day after that, I'd go, I call it the five, four, three, two, one moment. Five minutes, next day four, next day three, next day two. And on the one, what I do is I don't do any of the training. I don't do any of the stuff. I'm only getting off this side because the mountain blocks on that side. I'm quite happy there. Good girl. I think she's been amazing. She deserves a round of applause. Come on, she did better than that. Come on, this is a lovely chestnut mare. Go on, try and move her from the mountain block. Try and move her. Go on, I said try and move her.